Well, welcome to CRST 151 Christian Thought. And what we're going to do today is talk about something which for a lot of students is really helpful and very freeing, and something that they had not understood before. And so I'm hoping this is going to help you the way it helps a lot of students. And it's the whole question about has the Bible been changed? It's a, in this course, what we do in this course is we deal with questions. We deal with questions that people have, sincere people, who have learned something or been taught something or have understood something or believed something for a lot of, a lot of their lives. And they, they want to ask these questions. And if you're a Christian, you may have been asked these questions and you may have been in a situation where you gave an answer that you heard a pastor give or that you read somewhere or heard somewhere, or you may not be able to give an answer. So what, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do different kinds of questions. And, and the questions we're going to deal with are questions that you hear. And they're good questions. A lot of them are really good questions because they, they make us actually think about our faith and where we are in our faith. And that's a good thing. So we're going to start off with the first question, which is, has the Bible been changed? Which is like the one we hear the most. So let's, let's look at this question. Has the Bible been changed? Okay, so let me move out of the way for a second here. Let's see if I can move myself. I guess I can't. So I'll just go down here. Has the Bible been changed by early Christians? And so that's what people normally say. Has the Bible been changed by early Christians? And really, honestly, um, this could be, well, the Bible's been changed. There are lots of different versions. There's translations, people will say. I've had lots of people say that. Or they'll say, you know, there's, um, you know, different manuscripts. There's 5,000 different manuscripts and um, that, you know, and there are differences in spelling and there are differences in words. And so the Bible's been changed and therefore the Bible is not true. And it's the wrong question. And you got to catch this because it's really important. Don't get caught in answering the wrong question because there's no point in answering the wrong question because the question itself doesn't understand Christianity because Christianity doesn't teach the same thing that other religions teach about our scriptures. The question is not, has the Bible been changed? The correct question is, has the Bible, has what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ been changed? Because that's the real key. And that's where people get confused. That's the wrong question. Has the Bible been changed? The corrected question is, has what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ been changed? Did someone change what the Bible teaches about Jesus being the Son of God, for example? So if you were to look back at every single change, every single one of them, okay? So we're going back, you know, like over 2,000, well, really, honestly, 3,500 years. So you go back 3,500 years, and you look at every single change, supposed change or real change. You see every single change, and you look at every single manuscript, and different spellings and words that might be left out or words that might be added. Look at every single one from, from, from the beginning of history when we of the Bible. Did any of those changes or any of those words that are dropped out or any of those different spellings ever change what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ being the Son of God? No. That's a fact. It doesn't matter who it is. Anybody who goes through all of those documents are going to go, that's, well, that's true. Nothing has been changed about what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ being the Son of God. He's the Son of God in the Old Testament. He's the Son of God in the New Testament. He's the Son of God in the Book of Matthew. He's in the Son of God of early manuscripts. He's in the Son of God of late manuscripts. He's, in the, son, he's the Son of God in every manuscript. Nothing changes. Now, that's a tricky thing because, oh, the Bible's been changed. The Bible's been changed about what? How you spell a word? Well, we don't care about that. Has the Bible been changed in what it says about Jesus Christ? Well, actually, no. If it were, ooh, that would be problematic. That'd be a problem. But it, it is. It doesn't. Okay. Did someone change what the Bible teaches about Jesus being equal with God? Whoa. Now, there's an interesting question. Because when someone says, oh, the Bible's been changed, the Bible's been changed, you're like, okay. Did someone change what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ being equal to God? No. Nowhere. Every, every verse that in any Bible teaches that Jesus is the Son of God, and there are so many verses that teach that. 
any Bible anywhere that teaches that. Well, it's, it's, it's the same everywhere. It's the same in ancient manuscripts. It's the same in the Old Testament. It's, it's, it's the same in, in the different papyrus manuscripts that they find in, in Egypt that they've found over the, or in the Dead Sea Scrolls or that they found all over. No, there is nowhere that someone has changed what the Bible teaches about Jesus being equal to God. So, so has the Bible been changed? I really don't care. Well, what I do care about is the Bible been changed about Jesus. That I care about. Is he the son of God? Um, is he equal to God? Did someone change what the Bible teaches about Jesus suffering and dying on the cross? Oh, well, that's an interesting question. Did somebody change what the Bible teaches about the fact that Jesus was arrested? Does, did somebody change what the Bible teaches about the fact that Jesus was beaten? Did somebody change what the Bible says about Jesus carrying his cross or Jesus being nailed to the cross or Jesus dying on the cross? No. Buried? No. no they're all there. It's, it's, it, all of them are there. Nothing was changed. And does the Bible... Does, did someone change what the Bible teaches about Jesus rising from the dead on the third day after his, uh, after his resurrection? No, no, no. So we don't care. We, I, I'm sorry this is confusing people, but we, we don't care whether or not the Bible's been changed. You know, when somebody says, oh, the Bible's been changed, you're like, so? Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. I don't really care. Unless it's been changed about what it says about Jesus Christ. Because Christians believe that the greatest revelation in the universe is Jesus Christ. It's not the Bible. Now, I, I have to say this again. Christians believe that the greatest revelation in the universe is the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you think about it and you'll understand right away. Yeah, the Bible's the word of God. And the Bible re reveals God's heart. And the Bible reveals God's character. And the Bible reveals God's will. But wait a minute. He who has seen Jesus has seen the Father. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus was God in the flesh. And we beheld him uh, as of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. Whatever we see in Jesus Christ, we're seeing God. That's the greatest revelation. The greatest revelation in the, in the universe is Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ has made God known. Uh, John says no one has seen God at any time, but the only begotten God has revealed him. The greatest revelation is not the Bible. In fact, the Bible is really its purpose is to reveal Jesus Christ. Uh, what does the word revelation mean? It's what God reveals, especially about God and his thoughts and purposes and will. John 1, 18, no one has seen God. The only son who is the same as God and is at the father's side, he has made him known. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father. That is all we need. Jesus answered, for a long time I've been with you all, yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, Believe because of the things I do. I want you to notice here what Jesus says about himself. He says, he who has seen me has seen the Father. Wow. And this is Jesus saying it, and he's saying it straight out so you can understand exactly what he's saying. He says, do you not realize that I am in the Father and the Father's in me? Wow. We're going to talk about that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. When we talk about the Trinity later on in the course, just keep it in mind. God used to speak through prophets, but now God speaks directly through his son. I, I'll move this out of the way so you can see that. But now God speaks to us through his son. I, I want you to catch this. This is super important. This is super, super important. 
God used to speak through prophets, but he stopped doing that. Because once the son came, he says, listen to him, listen to what he says. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors many times and in many ways through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. He is the one whom God, through whom God created the universe the one whom God has chosen to possess all things at the end. Now, I just want you to catch this, what this is saying. God spoke to our ancestors in many times and in many ways through the prophets. These last days, he's spoken to us through his son. And what does that mean? It means that if you listen to the prophet Isaiah, but you do not receive Jesus Christ, well, God is no longer speaking through Isaiah without Jesus Christ. The message of Isaiah will do you no good without Jesus Christ because God has spoken in his son. God has said all that the prophets said, well, they were preparing for the son to come. The son is God speaking to the world now. And it's not as a prophet, but as the son of God. Notice it says, through his son. So it's really, really important we don't, Christians believe that the Bible doesn't save people, but only Jesus Christ can save people. Super important. We're not called Biblians or Bibleians. We're called Christians. There's a reason for that. Because salvation doesn't come through our learning the Bible or obeying the Bible or listening to the Bible. The Bible's purpose is to point to the coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible reveals Jesus Christ to us. Yes. We obey the teachings of the Bible. Yes, we obey the commands of the Bible. But only Jesus Christ can save. Only Jesus Christ can save. Period. That's it. There is nowhere else you're going to go to find salvation. You're not going to find it in the book of Deuteronomy. Except how Deuteronomy points to the coming of Jesus Christ. You're not going to find it in the book of Matthew, except how the book of Matthew points to Jesus Christ. Salvation is not in the Bible. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible points to him. You study the scriptures because you think that in them you will find eternal life. And these very scriptures speak about me. If you are not willing to come to me in order to have life. See, see what Jesus is teaching here. He's teaching that they're studying the scriptures because they're looking for eternal life. But the scriptures speak about Jesus and they, they have to come to Jesus. Not to the Bible. Yes, 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 we read the Bible. Yes, we study the Bible. We memorize the Bible. We learn the Bible. We love the Bible. But we love it because it points us to Jesus Christ and to a living relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me, Jesus said. Salvation is to be found in, through him alone. In all the world, there is no one else whom God has given who can save us. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Now, you know, say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. I'm gonna... But there's only one way, Jesus Christ. There is no one else whom God has given who can save us. What did Jesus say? These very scriptures speak about me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father or goes to the Father except by me. So what does this all mean then in, in, in real life? Where do we go with this? Well, when a person says, oh, the Bible's been changed, and you know, like we Christians were like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna say? But that's, that's the wrong answer. It's, you, you know why? Because it's the wrong question. It's just the wrong question. You're, you're never gonna win that, that war because it has nothing to do with Christianity. It has nothing to do with Christianity because our faith is not in the Bible. Our faith is in Jesus. Jesus is the revelation of God. Well, I, I don't need anything but Jesus. Now, 
I want you to know I believe the Bible is true. I believe every word of it is true. I believe all the history is true. I believe what it says about scientific things, what it says about history is true, what it says about everything in life. I believe the Bible is true. And I believe that when the Bible is originally written and put together, that it was perfect without any errors in it. But that is not where my faith is. My faith is in Jesus. I promise you, when I'm going through difficult times, I don't say to myself, oh, I know the Bible is true. I promise you, I say, I know that Jesus is true. I know that Jesus really was prophesied by the Old Testament. I know that Jesus really did rise from the dead. I know he rose from the dead. I have no question. The historical evidence is undeniable, and we'll see this in later in the course, so don't worry about it. But I'm telling you, I don't say to myself, oh, well, you know, I believe the Bible, so therefore I'm okay. I, ask, I, I do say, I do say, I do say, I do say a lot. You know, I believe these promises are true, but the reason I believe they're true is because Jesus said they're true. That's why I believe. Okay, so I just hope you get this idea. Oh, the Bible's been changed. And your answer is, well, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think so, but I don't really care. Because what the Bible teaches about Jesus hasn't changed. And that's a fact. That's just a simple fact. What the Bible teaches about Jesus hasn't been changed. And, and so my faith is in Jesus Christ, and Jesus is the Son of God. Well, that hasn't been changed. Well, Jesus... Um, is equal with God. Oh, that hasn't been changed. Well, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. That hasn't been changed. Jesus rose from the dead in glory. That hasn't been changed. Well, man, if those things haven't been changed, that's where my faith is. I mean, that's where my salvation is. That's where my whole life is. Everything is in Jesus. And so I guess, gosh, if, if, if you're thinking that's like a really, you know, oh, look at me, I, I sure... I sure showed that that stupid Christian. I, I showed that Christian because, you know, I showed him that, oh, the Bible's been changed. And the Christian's like, no, that doesn't mean anything because I don't care if the Bible's been changed. I care if what the Bible says about Jesus has been changed. And it hasn't. And so that's an empty argument. Okay. I hope you just, I, and I'll just say one more thing. Just remember, that for Christians, we are not concerned about the words. Although I believe the words are protected by the Holy Spirit, but we're not concerned about the words. Christians are concerned about the message. That's why it can be translated. The Bible is the much, as much the Bible, if it's in Greek and Hebrew, as it is in English, in Urdu, Persian, Chinese, and it's the same, same, same. It doesn't matter because the message is what matters. The message is what's mat what matters. And, and what's the message? Jesus Christ. That's the message. I hope this has helped you because this is really important to get this into your heart. The Bible, whether it's been changed or not, is not important. What's important is, is what it says about Jesus Christ. Has that changed? So God bless you richly as you begin this course and you wrestle through with these questions.